the beautiful lady that we get from this. I think the tonality is, is very nice as well. Uh, and I think it's a, a, a great portrait. Next. Do you want to review it later? Um, did you want to keep it and review it later? Um, um, Robin? Oh, oh, that's in right. Is that how you guys? No, not in or out. Just do you want to review it later? Is it, uh, is it image that ha meets your standards? You want to hold on to it and review it later and include it in the final batch? Um, I have actually already did all of my um, right. paintings. I got to see them earlier. Yeah, but we need to, you need to pick the ones that you think are meet your standards or, you know, we, like per the email I sent you. Oh, kind okay. of like, is you want to keep it and review it later? Or do you, I mean, you know, the question is really, does the image meet, you like the image enough that you want to put it in the, the best group batch, if you will. That's a good way to put yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I, I will. Okay. okay, make sure. Okay, got it. Okay, next one. Oh yeah, we're ready for the next one. Abandoned, ho abandoned hotel. The title definitely adds a whole nother level of how, how we look at this. So I like it that you guys always read the title. I think that's very important. And I remember seeing this image before. Um, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I can't remember when I got to see all of you guys last time, but um, I think I remember seeing this one. Um, I like the scene and setting. Um, I think it could benefit from a little more um, a landscape around it, a little more sky and cloud to add to the moodiness. It's, um, it's really compelling as a subject, and I think you could benefit from a, a, a wider view of it. Um, the other constructive thing I have to offer is um, because it is such a moody subject it doesn't have to be quite as sharp and it's been sharpened to this very um articulated um kind of contrasty um sharpening and i would back off on that on this one um, especially because of the age and mysteriousness of the subject matter so is that one you want to review later or not review later i'm going to to pass okay got it I guess I shouldn't have bought in that hotel. Anyway, next one. <laughs> Boardwalk Pavilion. I really enjoyed the abstract quality of this. Um, it, it makes you think about form. And the first thing I saw when I saw that sweeping motion, it almost looks like the pages of a book or something being turned where you're looking back into the history and the age that, um, that Wood can, can tell us. Um, it's interesting as an abstraction. We, we know what it is, but then our mind's eye has um, sort of the ability to step back and enjoy the shapes. So I do think it's successful as an abstraction. And I do like the choice of it being in um, monotone, monochrome. I think that color would not let us, not let our eyes feast on the shapes as much as we do here. Um, and I do like it. In the general scheme of it, though, I think I'm going to pass this one. Okay, got it. Dad, dad's haircut. This is the photograph that benefits from what we don't see. The subject, you know, is the dad getting the haircut, but I love it that we don't see his face and that we see the other people in profile. And it's, it's really an image about the eye and not just our eye uh, where we look when we first enter, you know, our first view of the photograph, we quickly can see what's going on. But um, the two faces in profile and the concentration of the guy's eye that's doing the haircut makes it um, a very, intense kind of moment, his concentration. And then of course the kid looking back sort of bookends it. And I think that really helps with the composition. We see enough of the scene to 
make it interesting as well. So we start to get more of a story, a sense of place. And the, the horizontal lines going through it, the shape of the mirror, the guy's head breaking over the frame of the mirror. There are all these little things in there that make this very compelling. And I think um, we can have a tendency to get too, um, what's the word, um, infatuated with our subject that we can focus just on the guy getting the haircut or we can try to get too much of the, the face. But this is works really well because you're back. You're, the person's not just centered in the middle of the frame. Their off center is kind of kicked off to the side. So the energy is going like this and we get to see the full screen. So um, this is very successful and I'm going to keep this one. Okay. The Brovnik Cathedral Interior. Again, I think the monochrome is a good choice for this. Um, to see the shapes more fully. It's very symmetrical, you know, not quite right down the middle, but um, we have this really wonderful symmetry, almost like the two parts of your brain coming together in this, in this um, harmonic balance. I think it's very interesting as an architectural study as well. Um, I think it's a successful architectural interior shot and it also is um it documents it documents this beautiful place um for the competition though i'm going past all right hair that's the title hair well, you definitely get that wispy tickly feeling from it um it's a nature shot. It also starts to take us into the realm of abstraction where we see these wonderful shapes and this repetition of shape. I think the choice of monochrome, definitely. Um, there's nothing in the background to distract us from that wonderful repetition that's going on. Also, I um, really like the choice of the square and if you look, there's a there's a curve that's happening. So it's almost like this arc that goes through the square and we go back to these perfect geometric forms of the circle and the square and how they start to visually speak to each other. So I think it's um, a very simple, very beautiful image and uh, would go very well with the, the nature talk that I wanna do for you guys. So um, I do like this one and um, I will put it in for the final consideration. All righty. Hang 10. So um, great nature shot. It's sharp and up close. Love the background dropping out so we don't see a bunch of scraggly bushes and things that distract from our subject, which is very clearly the chipmunk. I like the shape of the tail being repeated in the form of the wood. Um, one suggestion, if possible, if it isn't possible, just a tiny tip down of the camera would have gotten more tension of the chipmunk up to the top edge. And then I really wanna see that part of the wood that comes down, that knob that's coming off the bottom right-hand corner. I, I just really wanna see the bottom of that. I wanna see the completion of that shape and some space down low and maybe up tighter. And that's, that's really picky. That's just a, a, a compositional um, idea that, you know, if we could see that, it might make the image stronger and I, I would just consider that, um, you know, maybe there's another shot where that's all in there. I don't know, but I, I do think it would help it. And um, that way your eye goes, go back around that and come back and you would have this really cool counterclockwise visual compositional energy thing going. So um, next. So you wanna forego that one and- Yeah, yes. Okay, to make sure I understood you right, okay. Julian. I think this has the interest 
beyond uh, whether we know these people or not. I mean, it could go in, in the category of someone we know or a family portrait or family photography, but um, there's something, there's a grittiness to the, to the black and white that, that I like that gives it a um, nostalgic kind of quality. And it definitely has this um, sort of cinematic moment of something that's happening. You know, she's looking at him and then he has this look like, you know, I really don't care what's going on here. And then of course the, the hair, the hair on top, I think makes it. So um, I think it's a great moment and um, definitely strengthen the, the facial emotion of the baby is definitely strengthened from um, black and white. The emotion in the eye, the moment is a good capture. Um, and, I, and I like it a lot for, um, for the competition though, I'm going to pass. Okay. Lana thinking. It's a very beautiful classical study of course, black and white um, lets us see the beautiful forms, the light, the side lighting is very dramatic. Um, compositionally, we have the figure right, right in the middle. I think it would have benefited to have some tension maybe if the curve of the back was up in the corner and then we had some nice weight at the bottom with some drapery that sort of continued the form of the of the leg and the figure and even the the wave of the hair could be carried through to the bottom of the photograph and the folds of the fabric or something. Um, I, I like it. It's a classic image. It's a beautifully done classical subject. Compositionally, I would like to see something more than it just right in the the center center of the you know, axis of the, of the image area, the frame. So I am going to skip this one. All right. Leave it open. There's a unknown element to this. Uh, immediately, what is the symbol we think of, of, of an open door, right? So there's either somebody hiding back there or it's a it's an entryway into a new realm to something that we don't know about yet it clicks in as far as personal symbolism all of the stuff going on so there's definitely a mood and mystery to it um i would have um a question about the the cropping i mean the verticality of it matches the shape of the door. So we do have that sense of a, of a vertical tension. So if it's, I guess like a vertical panorama format, like a square on a square, I think that works. In this case, I think I wanna see a little bit more um, weight at the bottom and maybe on the sides, you know, can, can we see a little bit more? That's going to lead us back into that doorway and down the stairs even more. So um, I think it's a great idea as far as symbolism and interest and intrigue. Um, I want to see some different compositional stuff that can make it even more um, tense, compositional tension. I mean, and I think that could be um, even, even your angle. If there's more of the floor coming down, that's going to give you more perspective. Um, I think it's definitely something to, to look at again and revisit and play with. And I will pass on this one. All right. Lighthouse Ruin. And I remember seeing this, we got to talk about this one before too, I think, if, uh, if my memory serves me. And my idea was that um, it's such a great, ruin that it might be worth it to retouch out some of the more modern elements in the foreground, the post and the, the chain and then the sign on the other side. Um, it, it's a reminder of modern reality that I don't want to think about when I'm looking at this beautiful ruin. 
and I, I love the contrast. I love the dark sky. I love the whiteness of the bricks of the ruin coming out. And that really truly a, a feast for the eye. So I think if you either could, you know, and I, if it's something that you didn't want to have to retouch out, then when you're in the moment shooting it, maybe you get closer or you get more around to the side where you're looking through the windows and getting some of the cloud shapes through the windows and getting more of a tight um, tension of, of composition of just the sky and the ruin. And that way you don't see the foreground, you don't see the grass in the foreground or any of the modern elements. We just get that part. And, you know, that being said, maybe it's um, part of that could be cropped away too into a, a panorama where you just get the shape of the cloud and the repetition of that shape in the jagged areas of the the ruined coming up you know well, it's a cool place right. and um i will pass on this one all right like father like son well, that immediately takes us into um, a narrative and a story, and it's very simplified mirror image. It's um, I like it because it's symbolic of the people that we don't see. We kind of imagine them in, in our minds, you know, how, who, who are these people, and yeah, it's cool they have the, you know, the same shoes, and then the carpet pattern sort of mimics those shapes too into a nice um, abstraction. Um, the title definitely tells us what we need to know, I think, for the image to make sense. So I, I, I agree with that. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's cool. It's a statement. It's, um, again, I think stronger being in black and white than in color. Um, could see the repetition of the shapes much more freely. Um, and I will pass on this one for the final decision. All right. Middle prong, late afternoon. There is a lot going on in here it's a great nature shot the monochrome choice simplifies it i think that makes it easier on the eye it's a nice scenic um the choice to have it sharp and the water sharp i think works because all that texture of talking to the to the leaves um the image continues to stay sharp all the way through from the foreground and and to the back and that's a you know that's a style that's a a cool style the light from the upper corner follows through down into the stream so it's a very simple um device to have that light go at an angle through the whole image so um it's beautiful it's it's nicely done and um i really don't have any um you know, any thoughts on how, how it can be improved. Um, it's a scene like, like we see a lot. Um, and I think f for that reason alone, um, I'm going to pass on it for the final one. Um, you know, if you said, what is the subject of this? It's the light and the light continuing through the water. So it's, um, it's very restful. Um, there's really, um, as far as entertaining the viewer, maybe a subject added to it would, would make it um, interesting, you know, bump it into another category. But it's, right. a, it's a, you know, fine art articulation place, it's, it's cool. Um, but I'm gonna pass on this great shot. All right. For, for the final smackdown. Alrighty, next is migration. 
this really becomes a graphic design. It's, um, you know, the, the stark white blown out sky is cool. Um, it's an intention. It's um, an articulation that the artist has decided to do to make the shape of the trees and the crows more dramatic. Um, so I think it's very successful. You know, our eye starts going around with the shape of the limbs bring us back. The one bird that's looking up to the corner um, makes it very cool. So I, th I thought it was unique and I'm going to add it to the final consideration. All righty, got it. Old friends. This is a great shot. I would call it, um, you know, street photography. It's a moment. Um, I don't know if there's more space, but I would like to see, cause there's so much, you know, tension when, you know, the angle of the arm and all that going on. Um, I don't know if there's more there, if you've cropped to it or not. But, um, when I see this, I want to know more about it that I'm that I'm not getting, and that's um, a sense of of place. Um, you know, the title, of course, lets us know that they know each other. But I want to see more. I want to see more of the scene. Um, I think their expression, the time that we see in their faces, all that becomes really compelling. But I just want to see more. I want to see more of the setting of where they are. Um, I think if this was part of a series, and that's one of the things we've been talking about a lot on a Saturday photo party that we that we have every month, um, it's how images fit together in a series. And if this were part of a bigger narrative about a place um, or about these people, I think it would be very successful. But alone, I just I want to know more about it. And I am going to pass on this. Okay. One. Got it. Ominous cloud burst. The the bleakness of the gray is absolutely wonderful. Um, I love this because it's not over sharpened. We do not have that hard artifact outline of over sharpening. We have true atmospheric perspective like we would have in an old painting where our eye can just go back and back and back. And it, the more you look into it, the deeper you see this big cloud is coming forward. You know, our, our eye, we're, we're actually visually sailing, you know, over the foreground through the, through the cloud that's the, the mid ground and we just keep going, you know, and then there's this rain and there's another level of clouds behind that. So the fact that this is not over sharpened or um, because the subject is so soft, um, it has not had a real contrast bump added to it. It allows our eye to see more as if we were really standing there. You know, I can feel the cool mist of the rain in the air before it hits me. I can feel all of this stuff going on. And then even as we go back, there's this, this hint of uh, water or something else. It, you know, it goes in, it takes us into this dreaminess. So I think that the photographer made a correct decision in um, not overly articulating the atmosphere. We really get to soak up this um, ominous cloud atmosphere as it's titled. So uh, I'm going to keep this one in. All right. On a wing. I liked seeing this in black and white. Um, typically, I think when we see um, photos in the air of planes and things like that, we, it's in our mind, we're gonna see it on a blue background or you know, it's gonna be the sky. But the fact that it's the photographic artist has chosen to make it monochrome makes us appreciate the shapes and the precision of those overlapping of wings even more. Uh, the planes themselves are a true black and there's a true white in the clouds. Um, the texture of the clouds 
it's all there. Nothing's being lost. None of the highlights are blown out. And then it's just on this gray. And the other wonderful thing about the shot is um, they're not right in the middle. It hasn't been, you know, like tilted and cropped where everything's right in the middle. I mean, they, you know, I feel like they're, they're coming through, you know, they're, they're going to come off. There's this whole energy of motion where they could come flying right out the other side of the frame. So I think that the composition of this, it makes me feel like it has not been after cropped as an afterthought. I feel like this is truly designed in camera and whether or not, you know, that's true, it's, it's very successful. So um, let's keep this in. Okay. Pac-Man on the roof. And it is all about that shape, you know, it's, it's there. Um, I thought this was really interesting as a graphic, as a abstraction, which is starting to go into. Um, there's only one detraction. And I don't know if you guys can see it on your screen, but when the roof comes down, there is a foreign element of offensive shrubbery that could very easily be taken out. And when I look at that, I mean, my eyes going around, there's this line coming up, there's this great anchor on the side, there's that wonderful arch and our eyes coming back around, and then there's that clump of trees in there that could so easily be taken out. And it would be worth it. I think that the, the image would... Uh, soar into the realm of perfection if that one foreign element was taken out. Because you look at it, it's a dark, can you guys see it? Yep. On your screen? Okay. Um, so anyway, that's, that's my thought is um, get rid of it. All right. And I will pass on this image. All right. Uh, pals forever. Very, very bright um, portrait, street photography, all of these things. Um, when you look at it, your eyes, you go back and forth, you're looking at the two faces, you get enough of the scene. You don't really know exactly where you are. Um, maybe a different view or more of the scene could, could tell us more. Um, I think it's a, Again, if it's part of a whole narrative about a place and street photography and we had other images supporting it, we would be drawn into it more. Th these are portraits of people that we don't know. It's very great portraiture. Um, I want to see it in a narrative that tells us more of the story of who these people are and, and the place. This is a, a standalone image. Um, although perfectly done, um, I will pass. Okay. Priceless. This is a symbol of, the, of our time or the time we've been through, I'm gonna say of last year. And I have to laugh, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a symbol. It's a great um, iconographic symbol of something that we all get, you know, and that's well done. It's, it's dramatic. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's not a product shot. There's, um, you know, there's drama to it, to the the angle of it going back, there's tension towards the edge. So, um, yeah, I think it's funny. And um, I will, um, I'll put it in the next one. All right. It made me laugh out loud. So, all that's... right. I got it. Uh, I just got to notice my internet is unstable. So, if I vanish, just keep moving on, Rohit. <laughs> okay. So it's, we're good. We're good so far. I'm just letting you know. Go ahead. Self-evident. That's the title. So this is a, this is a scene. This is a, something that's going on. Um, we don't know exactly. And I think that there could be more 
tension if you just made a few compositional decisions. From the title, the topic of this photograph is the sign. So we look at the sign, but then there are all these other signs in the background. And of course, you know, they may tell us, you know, where it is and um, may tell us some more information, but visually, it's sort of a, a, a mood killer, I think, and that if you've done a few things compositionally, it would have been a, a stronger image. And that would be to get that, those arches that are going back just above the flag, let that be the top of your photograph. And that way you would crop out where it says historic district and visitor center and center, all those across the top. And then that other balcony and other really clutter that's in the top of your frame, get rid of it. Crop in camera, frame it. I'm saying crop, and I mean while you're taking the picture, ideally. Um, and then let that, that's what I'll do is I'll look for a shape that's going to be, that's going to hold the edge, that's going to be the top design of my photograph. And that way you could get their feet. I feel like just cropping off their feet at the ankle is, um, is not as strong as getting the feet and then the shadow and then that line coming down could become another compositional thing. So I think when we look at this, we see the sign and we're, we get the sign and that's our photograph. But at the moment, if we just tilt the camera down and look at a stronger um, foreground, a lot of weight at the bottom, all of their feet, even get all of the shadows under their feet, don't even cross off the shadows then all of that becomes the foundation. Then you have the people in the image, you know, as the middle, and then this wonderful curve across the top. Even if you crop off the top of the flag, that's okay. We know what, even if we don't see that, we know what it looks like, right? And I think that would be a very strong image. So this was close, but um, I would play with it the next time you're out and photographing, um, you know, street scenes or a group like this. I think that would really, really help. So mm -hmm. I will skip this one. All right. Siblings. The warm tonality of the black and white really it makes this very emotional. I think it's beautifully done, beautifully articulated. The background is nicely simplified, the light behind her head, um, just the, the radiance that's coming from their eyes is, um, it is um, even more empowered by this softer kind of tonality. So I think that's very successful and I like it as a square. Um, again, I, I wanna see a whole series. As a, as a standalone image, I wanna know more. Um, so I would put it in a um, street photography, great portrait. Um, I would also define it as um, artistically articulated as far as the tonality, but I want to know more of the story. I want to see it as part of a group of a longer narrative. So I will skip this one. All righty. Next. All right, title of this is huh, Stairs. Great shapes. Um, the foliage is going lighter, almost like a, a infrared. Um, the, the black border lets us know that the shapes are important, that this is a composition based on shapes. The all of the energy and lines are really cool. The thing that where it starts to lose power is that upper right hand corner. So that, that double angle, the cars and the parking garage and um, things like that. To me, that's another shot that's sort of bleeding into this shot. So I wanna see that gone. That, that strikes me, my eye goes up and then it kind of goes back 
and around behind the garage and it, it takes away the power of the composition of the foreground. So I would um, format it with that out. Then it becomes about the stairs, the hedge, all that can start talking together um, compositionally. I do like the lightness and the tonality of it. And um, I do like the decision to put the, the frame, you know, the dark frame around it, like the, the film, like it was the film edge. I like that. I think it works with this tonality, but I would just lose that at the top and I think you're good to go. So um, I will pass on this one for the final decision. All right. Sun run. To me, this, this is um, very, very powerful. Um, it's very graphic. It's um, dark and light. Even the, the, the freeze at the bottom of the, the characters, it almost makes him into this um, superhero kind of character. And then the flash of light coming out is like, you know, kaboom. So it has this real um, strength. I like how it's off center. He's off center. Um, there's a nice grayness to the background, so it's not, um, you know, totally, um, you know, whited out. And it, it says a lot. It becomes a symbol. Um, and the way that the placement of his feet so perfectly on that line and the the strength of his arm. I mean, all of the stuff that's going on, the determination in his face, even though we do not see his face, we're only seeing it as a silhouette, um, that becomes more powerful. If we saw too much of his face, then it would not have this wonderful symbolism. Um, the fact that it's a silhouette makes it extremely strong. Um, I think if we saw his face, then it would become more of a portrait, not a universal symbol. So I definitely want to keep this one in. All right. Sunset at stage light. Great sweeping landscape. Love the simplified repetition of grass. It's all pretty unified grass that leading us in towards the beautifully lit um, lighthouse. I think it's a lighthouse. Um, very, very compelling. The, the sweep, the, you know, getting down low, get that, that big foreground, and it's talking to the, to all the wonderful texture and the clouds and the sky. And if you, um, if you go back and look at it. Uh, Rohit, you want to go to the other one, the one that you were showing? Can you hear me, Rohit? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're showing the uh, previous one. We want sunset at stage light. I think you're showing the previous image by August. We're good. We're good. But the fact that everything is so gray, and then you have this that beautiful beacon of light, and it's 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 a lighthouse, and it's lit up, and it's not even at night, and you're not even seeing the lighthouse, but it's still this beacon, you know, in the landscape. So um, I think it's very well done. I will keep this one. All right. Sun thrust. Great shapes that play with your with your mind. You know, you have the different shapes talking to each other, so it's a nice abstraction. It's a, a lot of shapes and tonality going on in here, and um, when I when I look at an image. I'm very mindful of what what do I see first? What is my eye path? When I look at it, where does my eye go? And it follows that track. You know, it sweeps around and behind. It gives me um, a sense of, of movement that I'm actually moving in and around the image. So it's cool. Um, very picky, but there's some little scraggly shrubbery in there that could be possibly taken out or just darkened. So it was not, um, the leafiness of the little 
bushes and things in there take away from that streamlined modern swoosh. I mean, like I, I don't want to see the trees in there, even though they're there. I think if they were just darkened, that they were minimalized. And then the really only real detraction is that one straggly bush, because you've got that really strong white brickle line coming through. I would just take that out. I don't think it would be that hard to do that. That one little scraggledy tree, it stops you. It stops you from, you know, that really cool swoop. That is so picky, I know. Um, it's, a, it's a really good image, but uh, I am going to pass on it for, um, for this competition. All right. Ty Swan. Simple, the, the drop, the ripple in the water is really cool. Um, nice shape. Maybe if it were back a little bit more, the arch of the swan was up tighter to the edge and then we saw more of a completion of the ripple, it would add drama, it would add some compositional drama. And I wanna see more detail in the feathers, they're starting to, to blow out. And I think a darker exposure where you really see, cause like on his neck, you're seeing all the beautiful shapes and textures of the feather and you're starting to see it on the side. Um, I really wanna see that on the, the back where it's blown out a little bit. Um, that's um, my best recommendation to improve um, this, but I think it's a, a really nice nature shot um, for this time, I am going to take it out. Okay, got it. The bean. Shapes, the curvature of the circle, really good composition. Um, what do you think if we saw just the top of the triangle? It's just so close to the edge. Again, really, really picky, but we're seeing the tops of the buildings reflected that all have these, these points. And when I look and just that one, I just wanna see that one little part of the triangle on the top left-hand corner where it's cropped off. I don't know if it's in there, if that's something that you can um, retrieve, but if that were in there, then it would, when we, when we look into the, reflection of the bean and all the shapes we go there. If we had that one little shape, it would boomerang us back down and really complete the, the visual circle of the composition. So really picky, but I think it could be an important detail that you would want to keep in there. Um, and I will pass on this one. All right. The title of this one is? Well, the title of this one was The Bean. The next one's Train Depot. Train Depot is the title of this one. Okay. Okay. And that immediately lets us know what we're, what we're looking at. It's a, it's a great setting. Um, it's very poetic. It's, it's mournful. You know, the track is leading us in. The depot's our subject. Um, it, it makes me want to put something else in there, though. I don't know. I don't know what. Um, And again, if you saw the top, that one little cloud that's, that's cropped off, if you had the curvature of that and then another object in the bottom right to create this other cross coming back, um, it would be really cool. I mean, I could see it being um, like a, a story or a book cover and maybe you had a hat or a glove or some you know, human object down in the bottom right that would give us a, a deeper meaning or story, you know, to make us think more about what was going on here. Um, the strong track leading in, you know, there's a lot of nice stuff going on. Um, the texture, the tonality and all that is really good. But for some reason, I'm seeing it as a setting um, that would just be so perfect to, to have, um, another element in there. That's, um, when I saw it, that was the very first thing that came, came to mind. 
And I will pass on this one for the final decision. All right. Train to Odaiba. Oh, I said that right. The train to Odaiba. I feel like I'm out, like I'm going away. You know, it's um, it's funny how you can see motion and an energy in a shot. Um, and I feel, I guess, because the focus is back a little bit more and the foreground is soft, which is fine. Um, you have this sort of um, sense of motion of being unsettled and, you know, I can really feel like, oh, it's starting to move, you know. So I think that's really compelling. Um, I would love to see a lone figure or, or subject. When I look at it, I'm thinking this is a great setting. Um, yes, the, the motion, the place is the subject. If you had another element in the scene, um, I think it would add another dimension to it. So I will pass on this one. Okay, the last one of the mottos. Wary in the ruins. And I think I saw a print of this in a previous thing, if, or it may have been a, a different, um, a different one. And I remembered liking the tonality, um, the the softness of it, because we see so much of her face. Again, I would say it's a portrait. It's a portrait of someone we don't know, but. Um, the fact that she's not looking at us makes it more interesting. Um, she's looking off to the side, like something's going to happen. You know, is it, is it mysterious what's going on? So um, there is a tension in her expression that goes beyond a portrait. Um, the setting is simplified. Um, so I, I would say it's a, a very interesting psychological portrait for, um, today that I'm going to pass. All righty. Um, got it. Okay. Um, Rohit, did you want to just, I mean, I think, did, did anyone need to take a break, uh, especially the judge, uh, a brief break? Because we probably need to move to color and there's 49 of those. So you may want to pick I'll up go the pace quicker. I'll go, I'll, I'll go quicker on the next one. Um, okay, just on the colors that we're going to do those next. Yeah. Rohit, yeah. I, I don't think, I think it's best that we just move on. What do you think, Rohit? I'm good. I'm good to move on and I'll, I'll step it up. You're a trooper. Rohit? I'm good. Okay. Let's rock. Okay. Let's, let's, let's move rock. on. Yeah, we have 49 of these, so bear that in mind. Uh, okay, I'll uh, step down. You did a great job in the first half, by the way. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, that's 49. That's what I have. Thanks for everybody for entering. Uh, also, welcome to Vivian Lynch. Uh, it's good to have you here. Are we waiting for things to get racked up, Mike? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go through the color. And, okay, uh, I, I gotta, if we if we have a little pause while he's doing that, I have a recommendation for a Netflix I saw the other night. Go so, ahead, while Rohit gets it geared up. Go ahead, Ru, please. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. Maybe you all have seen this before. I I did not had not, and it's called. This is on Netflix. Our planet behind the scenes. Is anybody is anybody familiar with that? But yeah. it's narrated by Attenborough. Attenborough is that his name? Is he yeah. still alive? Okay. Well, this, I don't know when this was done, <laughs> but it was for it, it's uh, how it's showing how they set up the video for all these fabulous shots, like the sharks and these waters and some of the if difficulties they had filming Siberian tigers and stuff like that. So I think a lot of you might enjoy it and it gets into some technical things as well as some lighting. So again, it's on Netflix and it's our planet behind the scenes. It's a documentary. I write it down. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Check yeah. It, it sounds very interesting. Um, I believe Attenborough, who's Attenborough, who is still alive, um, is in his 90s. I, yeah, uh, that's right. I did. There was a recent thing he did on the environment, and he was ninety when he did that. You're right. Amazing. Okay. Uh, cool. While you're Rohit setting that up, getting it geared up, um, I'm going to be uh, adding three more videos for you to our little library that's building in YouTube. I need to send out the links to those. I'll send out the links to all of them, 
uh, members only. One of them is going to be about how to shoot reflections with, with uh, from National uh, Geographic Fundamentals Photography 2. Another one is going to be uh, that I'm going to add to the collection is going to be um, uh, completing your outdoor photography with landscape filters. That's photo guide with popular photography. And the other one is going to be how to shoot Yellowstone in the winter. So it applies to any winter background. So I'm going to add those to the collection. I'll send the links to all of them, which there's already 10 on there, to everybody in an email soon. So you can watch those whenever you want to, if you feel like it. All right? All right. So let's, we'll do the color next. And, uh, and uh, Robin will put forth her, her Superman or Superwoman suit and charge through these. Yeah. We'll start yeah. With the do a good job book. as well. Yeah, do a slideshow. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're gonna just show preview all these. Okay. Um, yeah, real. You know, we do that. I was so getting ready. Members kind of have an idea what we have to.
Okay, um, go back to the first one. Is that the first one, or I think that's the last one that you used. That's so when we. I'm sorry. When we enter into this photograph, we are taken into this magical realm. Okay. And oh, the title of this one's always watching, by the way. Okay. And it goes back to the whole um, symbolism of the, fox, you know, the foxy fox that's, that's very, very aware. And then we're in this idyllic moment of, um, you know, very private family moment, you know, and the, the light, how the light falls, the articulation of it is realistic. But then the whole scene has this soft, magical quality, you know, the colors of the, the light, the softness. Um, the subject is not right in the center, but down in the bottom right, there's this um, wonderful tension there from the creative decision that the, the artist made that, that did this. Um, and so we, we really feel like we are in this magical land that's um, highly successful. There's really nothing in here that does not support and um, empower all the other parts of the photograph. So let's keep this in. All right. Next. I laughed when I saw this. Umbrellas, I Umbrellas is the title. So there you go. It's a fun, it's fun. It's a street scene, um, great color. Um, you know, I'm sure people have pictures of me doing stuff when you're the photographer and you're in your own world. Uh, and it made me want to think of um, the photographs that they're getting, you know, shooting up like that. Um, but it's a, it's a fun scene. I liked it um, for the competition. I'm going to pass. All right. A Fragile Balance. Great title because you kind of get nervous seeing this, you know, it's, uh, there's a, a magic, almost like you're looking at a, um, you know, magician's trick going on here. Um, I like the, that's color, but it's not, um, you know, overly saturated. The egg itself has the most color and I love how these they're little, it's almost like a lampshade where the, behind it we can almost see into the, this magical egg and then the repetition of the the reflection empowers the composition even more my um, only criticism and of course this could be seeing it in digital format an actual image it may actually be there but the top of the egg is starting to go totally white I would like to hold a little more definition in the top of the egg that's blown out um, there's like a line where you see, um, you know, the texture of the egg and then it just kind of drops off. Um, the reverse of the egg that has that really cool shadow on the bottom is very strong. So I, I do want to keep this one in. All right. Got it. Um, uh, Amara, okay. okay uh, Amaryllis. Um, thank you. Amaryllis. Uh, and anyway, I'm I'm a relish. That's a, that's a, the title we'll go with. <laughs> I couldn't read it. I'm familiar with the flower. It's a beautiful flower. Uh, this becomes a, a great um, documentary where we can see what it really looks like. Um, I think that um, as far as adding more interest to it, you could get closer, and you know, because we're seeing it right in the center, and we're seeing the stuff all around the edge. If you went into it and crop some of that off and it started to go more into the realm of abstraction i think it would be more interesting or if you came back and it was part of a whole still still life scene where we saw a background and, and other things like that it would it would take us on this um photograph which is a very strong documentary um just as far as interest i would either recommend being closer or making it further back as part of a overall scene so I will take this one out. All right. <clears throat> Amsterdam. So, Amsterdam's a title. 
So it's said that um, a photograph can tell a story and I'm sure that there's quite an interesting narrative here. The choice of the red light um, makes us, um, you know, puts us in the red light district. So um, all of these things here are symbols that, that immediately tell us that. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, and you even have a guitar, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really um, funny and uh, telling narrative. So I did find it interesting. It could be used as a, maybe even a book cover or some kind of um, deeper story that it could illustrate. So um, I, I like the simplicity of the color and, and uh, yeah, and it also made me laugh. Um, in the overall uh, choice, I'm going to take it out. All right. Um, as in, well, as, 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 as in den or aspen den or anyway, leaf. I, I'm sorry. I really can't. That's the name of the of variety, I guess, of the vine. Uh, thank God for a botanist here. Go ahead. <laughs> I appreciate it. This one, I want to see it. I want to see more. It's very simple, but I think it could be again closer and have um, more um, tension. It could be in the realm of abstraction. Um, I also think it could be a little sharper. You could pop it even for more for more contrast. Um, I think it's a good start to start looking at at um, plant forms. Um, but I do want to see more of a, of a compositional decision. And I will take this one out. I would like to see this in uh, black and white. Bells of the waterfall. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm trying okay. to, trying to move it out. So I'm jumping the gun there, my apologies. Um, oh, we're good. So again, it's this, this really cool shape there's a lot of the blurry background that's not really informing us or a, a real strong compositional background. Um, I would like to see this closer and in black and white. Um, the forms are so interesting that I think the colors um, distract from that, from that repetition. So I'd like to see closer up and maybe consider doing it monochrome. And I will take this one out. All right. Bird Island. And the title had me looking around and then I saw the, the bird, which is the little, the little white spot. Um, you know, it's a soft, very, very pretty, um, pretty scene. It's chosen um, as a panorama. I think it's slightly wider, um, which gives more of a, a um, restfulness, restful quality to the scene. Um, there's a sharpness and a softness that's going on in the way that this the artist chose to articulate this. I think it might could be um, a little less um, glowy because the the glowiness is also making the bird kind of have a um, sort of a glow around it and we're losing detail in the bird itself. So uh, the whole scene could have been darker. We sort of could have seen detail in the bird, even though it's so tiny, I know. Um, and then that could actually add a little bit more to the, to the mood. It's a, it's a very beautiful place. So um, for now, I will take this one out. All right. Blue Hour. Beautiful scenic. You know, our eye goes back. Um, the sky is getting a little bit blurrier as it goes up. And I would like to see that stay sharp all the way. I mean, there's, um, there's really not a reason why um, that, you know, because you have this wide angle that that would not be as sharp as the whole scene. I don't know if that's something that the artist chose to do, but I think in this sense, um, I would like to see the whole scene sharp and not have that um, blurred out or have that depth of field drop off if that's the case. So I will pass on this one. All right. 
Colors of Life. I was very compelled by this. I've seen images that are colorized before. Where you have um, a really contrasty black and white, and then something you know really brilliantly like lipstick red in it. You know that that's been uh, something that we've seen before. But um, the fact that this is the sepia and that it's soft, and then color just the parts that are color are these pastel colors. I found it really interesting. I thought it was a great color study and I like it. Um, it definitely makes me feel like I'm in another world, another place. One thing that I would recommend that I would love for you to go back and do, if you would, please, is um, colorize everything in there that would have a color. So, you've got the colors in the bags, you have the color on the first shelf. I think there's a colors going on up, you know, so I'd like to see all of them, you know, all of the little products have that same relation and maybe even the brooms on the right. Some, some of the other things, some of the other little things, not the wall or the floor or anything like that. Cause in that point, you know, the whole thing is colorized. Right. But um, it just seems like, the areas that you chose drop off from the other elements that could also have been colorized in that way. And, and I mentioned that because I, I think it's a strong image and I think it would be worth doing that and I would like to see it. So I'm going to keep this one in. Okay. Next. Covered bridge at Mill Park. This is a Beautiful, scenic. I like how it's framed. I like the, the bridge, the softness of the water with the longer exposure is very nice. Um, I like the sharpness of the foreground in the bridge. Um, the upper right hand corner, there's not as much interesting stuff and there's a there's a house and another um, deck or some things up there that aren't as romantic. So um, just that quadrant or just the things in the farther background, which I'm saying is the area beyond the bridge, could, could be softened. I think the sharpness and contrast there um, becomes too heavy and our eye goes up to all that busyness. So if that were softened and blurred, then the juicy, needy part of the, the image, which is the stream, the foreground and the bridge is going to become more prominent and it's not going to have that busy, unimportant part um, fighting with it. So that's, that's a recommendation uh, you may want to consider and um, I will pass on this one. Okay. Curtis Salgado, 2018. So this is a, obviously a concert shot. Um, I don't know yeah, I who, the, who the person is. I don't know if it's a famous person or someone you know. Um, this photograph would become interesting to me if, if I knew who it was because it's a portrait of someone singing and that's all I know about it. You know, there's a blurry background. I don't know what style of music it is. The person's head is, um, you know, right in the center. So I want to see more of a, of a narrative and um, some other elements that can make it more um, poetic about a, a performance or um, that could have, um, I don't know, just other elements of, of interest rather than just the, the portrait of the person right in the middle. Um, I think that doing photographs of performers is really really interesting hopefully the performing arts will be coming back soon and i would really uh, encourage you to go out and um you know, if you enjoy that shoot some but think of it as a overall scene overall you know um composition so i will take this one out and we can go to the next one right. daylight So I start looking at this and my eye is kind of going all over the place. I, it's like I'm looking through these different elements. I don't know exactly what the subject is. Um, in that way, it does start to become instruction. The, it's daytime, but then the lights on. I mean, there are all these different um, 
signals, you know, that I'm, that I'm seeing when I'm looking in here. And I don't really have one place that my eye is going to, to, you know, to anchor me. Um, I think this is definitely something to continue to look at and play with as far as um, shapes and composition. The bottom right, um, if I get rid of that, the, the yellow and the other colors and maybe crop it as a square, it becomes much more simplified. And then I kind of look at it and ah, then I can see these, you know, repeating triangles, that kind of thing. So I, I would maybe just crop off the bottom and do it as a more simplified square. Um, very fun to start looking at shapes like this. I, I like the way you're, you're playing with it. So I would say, please um, continue that. And let's take this one out for now. Okay. Fairy mushroom. So the the title immediately takes us into this, uh, you know, the hidden realm, this little tiny world that we can see, you know, with our camera that, um, you know, that you're not going to be just walking around in the real world. And I like the choice to make the, the mushroom monumental. It's big and in our face. It's filling the screen. The focus is right on the important part. I like the foreground and background dropping out. That all works. Um, because of the title and because of the mysteriousness of the subject of the mushroom, I do think it's slightly over sharpened. So if you have another version and you went back to it and just didn't because if, if you look close, you can see around the shape of it, you're starting to get that hard um, kind of outline. And I don't think that needs to be that sharp. It, it can still be very sharp, but also have a soft, pleasing quality to it as well. Um, so that's really my only um, thought that might improve this. But I do like the image, and I do want to keep it in for the final decision. Okay. Fish out of water, speaking of refraction, but fish out of water. Very entertaining to the eye. Um, you know, you, you look at it and it becomes, um, you know, like a, a very straightforward studio kind of shot. Here are these glasses. And then you have all this weird um, deconstruction, you know, of the fish going on. So I do like it. Um, I love the... Um, simplified color palette that's a strength of this if there were any other colors in there to take away from the sort of pop art thing that's going on with how it's divided up um, it would not be as strong so really good i like how the water is turning sort of that aqua there's a little bit of the aqua blue that's the opposite polar opposite of the orange color on the color spectrum that um, also really works so um, very cool i'll leave it in it's a good example of the challenge that we're going to have. So anyway, go ahead. The next one is, feel sorry for the fish though, for the ride home. Um, cool travel documentary shot. Um, when I look at it, I look at the bike and then I kind of go around the whole scene. I've, I'd either want to see it um, tighter. I think the interesting part might be the, the shape of the bike being all white and the texture in maybe more foreground. We don't see the full, we don't see the full arch of the curve that would relate back to the bicycle tires and sort of the curves that are going on in the pavement. It, that part feels truncated and that makes that part of the photograph not as important. So I would look at it again compositionally where you have that completion of the arch that relates back to the bicycle towers or going in and getting a, more of a tighter composition somehow. Um, I like the tonality. I like the place. I think just playing a little bit more um, compositional, playful composition would make it more interesting. Next. Right. Okay, that's not for consideration then further? No. Okay, got it. Okay, um, gooseneck. Cool sweep, great <clears throat> exposure, 
detail in the highlights, really cool. I think it goes into a documentary kind of category. It's a beautiful specimen. I think that was chosen wisely. Um, as far as creative composition, I want to see either tighter or part of an overall table life. Um, I think it's a very strong documentary uh, type of photograph. Um, for the competition, I'm going to pass. All right. Heavenly abode. The clouds wafting up and out of it make it interesting. I do think it would be more interesting if it were not just right center, center in the middle. If it was kicked off to the side, more compositional tension, um, that it would be cool. It is a cool subject, and um, I like the idea of, um, you know, of it being a nest and all that. But um, I do want to see more compositional tension, and I'm going to take it out. All right. Hello. And it's right, you know, it's bright in your face. It's, um, it's beautiful. I think it would become stronger as part of a whole um, series of photographs. Um, as, a, as a standalone, it's perfectly articulated. It's very well done. But, you know, compositionally, it's, you know, center, center. The title is, you know, hello. I mean, it's right, it's right there in your face. I mean, that title speaks to it. I think it would become stronger if we saw a series of nine of them together. Maybe they're different um, f colored flowers or, you know, flowers with that same shape filling the, the screen that much, but I want to see it four up or more to, to make it, um, to make it have a deeper compositional interest. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the, the, the way it's, shot and presented, but um, for this time, I'm going to pass. Okay. Next is Innocence. And I think I saw a print of this. I think I saw this in another competition we did. I'm not sure. Uh, it may have been a different outbreak. Um, it's a portrait. I think it's beautiful because she is so beautiful. I love the red collar and the, the sweetness of her face. I do think it needs to be sharper, meaning her whole, um, you know, her eyes, hair, nose, and all that. I, I don't know if it's because it's up, the focus is more down on the, the sharpest part seems to be on her collar, um, which is not the most important part of the photograph. So I would want to see all of her features sharp, and I would want to see more. Again, not just the portrait, the head in the center, but I want to know more about her, where she is, where she lives, what, you know, what the scene is around her. Um, the title speaks to the sweet emotion and, you know, slight wariness that we see in her face. I think that's the strength of the photograph. Um, I would look at um, when, when you have opportunities to photograph people, um, in, in the street or wherever that, I don't know where this is, I'm just guessing. Um, I would really work at getting the eyes and the facial plane sharp. And I will take this one out. All right. Into the night. So I'm so compelled by this because it's, um, it's presented, it's articulated like a painting. And so, you know, first of all, it's like, whoa, that's not a photograph. But then it makes me want to know, it's like, okay, well, it's in a photographic competition. What was the original photograph? What, what is it? You know, am I looking through a, a lighted room out into uh, the darkness? You know, what is, what is this aperture going into this dark space? It's totally unknown to me. And I think for that reason, I, I'm compelled. I do want to know more. And um, I would ask the creator of this to, to tell us um, that there's been a real movement. And this is another thing we've talked about on our second Saturday photo party is um, when is a photograph an abstraction? It, you know, if you like, I can see this really big in a gallery and somebody buying it because 
of this composition. There are all these hints of structure of composition going in here that I love. Um, I could see this being big and, and beautiful on the wall, but if it's a photograph, do we need to know that it was, that it started as a photograph? You know, these are all things that are, you know, I'm, I'm getting far afield and I'm getting late, but um, I did find it really, really interesting and I will leave it in. All right. Into the spiral loop. Shape, composition, very, very interesting. It almost becomes like this keyhole into another dimension. I would do something to it to make it more emotional. The, the shape, you know, the, the lighting and all that is, is nice, but um, I want to see it simplified somehow. And I don't know if that would be a post-production effect of something that you could do just by making it darker. The one thing that throws me off my game when I'm looking at it is that square thing in the upper right. Um, that sort of tan looking thing hanging down. I'm going right to the center and then I look up at that and it's like, I don't want that to be there. That's the odd man out. So I would get rid of that and look at um, another, um, another way <clears throat> to take it more into a, a abstraction in how you articulate it. Um, not as real, not as realistic as that, if that makes any sense. Um, so I will take this one out and next. All right. <clears throat> Just you and me. Really cool. I like how it plays with your brain, you know, because it all fits together, but it's been deconstructed. I think it's a very strong image. I liked it. Um, when I look at it, that green puddle on the upper left, and you kind of see a little bit on the other side, I would just get rid of that green color because um, it's, um, it starts to be like a green grass, maybe because it's the color of shrubbery. I don't know, um, but it's, it looks like a different, it looks like a tonality from a different photograph that's creeping in. So I would just select that area and make that green a blue or a pink like you see in this other part of the reflection. And I think that will really, really strengthen this a lot something that simple, but I think I would bump this up into um, the category of perfection. And I do like it, and I'm going to put this in the final consideration. All right. Late summer splash. I want to be farther back to see more areas of sharpness. Right now, the sharpest area that's coming out of you is this rock on the upper left. Um, and I either don't want to see it at all and just see the blurry, beautiful abstraction of the water alone without anything sharp in there, or I want to see further back the whole scene where you have other anchoring elements of sharpness to get the water blur going. I love the, the energy of the water. I love the color. Um, I just want it to be further back and, or further in and just the water. So I'll take this one out. All right, we are about halfway point for the color. Next, Looking Beautiful. Glass Falls. Beautiful, scenic, soft, the upper triangle of shrubbery <clears throat> is, too, is too sharp because it's something far away. It's way behind you, but the sharpness is coming forward and it's fighting with these rocks that are coming forward. So I think if that were softened, um, the whole thing would be would be stronger. I love the sharpness of the rocks. I love the blur of the water. It's just that shrubbery is not your subject and it needs to be knocked back. It could also be darkened so it doesn't fight with the really more beautiful elements. All right. I'll take this one out. All right. Low country afternoon. Beautiful. Repetition of form, nicely done. Again, I look in, I see these little white things coming through, like in the background, like a fence, and then just under the other thing, there's a little fence. And because it's bright, 
I see it. I see it as almost like little dust spots or something. I would take them out, even though they're tiny, um, because they're so bright, our eye goes to it. Um, it's a beautiful scene, and for our purposes today, I'm going to take it out. All right. Memories. This is an odd one. I mean, it's, it's um, a place. We see a sculpture. We see this beautiful color. Um, the thing that's the great about this is there's no distracting element of, of green or any other color. It almost becomes monochrome in its simplicity. And then there's that one little bright pink spot. Um, I think it works. It, it makes you ask questions of, you know, what is this? What's it about? And um, I, I found it compelling and unique, so I'm going to leave it in. All right. Molten gold. Beautiful, restful scene, all about light and time of day. I would simplify it by getting rid of that one little clump of shrubbery on the upper left. That doesn't serve the scene, the simplicity of the scene. The other thing, I think it's been over sharpened where we start to get that white outline above the black locks. And that kills the atmospheric perspective that would let us soar all the way back to the horizon. There's not really a hard line on the horizon like there is on the, the rocks. See what I'm talking about. So I would soften that and um, I will take this one out. All right. Natural Bridge, Alabama. So I really feel like I'm down, you know, I'm down in this, uh, down in the hole, so to speak. Um, I like it. I think the strength of it is the interior rocks because uh, it's so sharp. The, the trees and everything up above become almost like another cutout photograph. You lose the mystery and softness of the um, the patterns of the rock down around you. So I would blur that. I would not have that be as sharp. I would just go in and um, take it down as far as contrast and sharpness because um, that's now the frame strongest part of your photograph, but um, it's not the most interesting part. All right. Next. Okay. okay. I'll take it out. Okay, not to review later. Okay. New Manchester Mill. Beautiful scene. Um, you know, when I'm looking at this, I'm looking at, at harmonies and the color of that gold tree, while it's beautiful, I find it distracting um, because it's just different. It's, it's different from the other tonalities. It's, it's really bright. Um, so it either... Um, totally desaturate it um, or figure out a different crop where I cropped it out of the scene. Because when you just look at this, that becomes the dominant thing because of its, of its um, intense color. Um, and I will take this one out. All right. Night Rider. Great scene, great setting. Um, like the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue that's really um, bold and in your face. The only mood killer is this modern light up here in the upper right. I know it's there, the street light with the thing. It's a, it does not fit with the car and the architecture and the, the night. It's, it's just a, it's a mood killer. And it's a great photograph. It might be hard to, um, you know, try to clone that architecture and get it out there, but I would try it. Um, I think that's the only thing that keeps this from being um, a really perfect shot. And I am going to, um, I really consider this one, but I just can't get past that, that light. And I know it's there, I know it was there and all of that, but uh, it's got to go. And so I'm going to take one out. All right. On top of the world. Jeez. It's really um, funny. It's, it's nature. It's street photography. Um, great subject. I don't want to see it in the middle. 
I don't want to see, I want to see more of the scene or tighter. Um, play with the composition and then it's going to become even more interesting. The, the monkey itself, it's very interesting, but I just want to see um, something different than the subject in the center. All right. I'll take this one out. And All right. On Vickery Creek. Again, I want to see uh, uh, more base, more weight at the bottom, less of the scraggly bushes in the background. The, the meat of the sandwich of the photograph, which is the beautifully blurred water, which is perfectly done. I love the sharpness and the, the degree of, of uh, motion that creates that beautiful water blur. It's, it's very, very well done. Um, I find the most prominent thing in the photograph though is this background up at the top, the uh, very, very sharp, trees and um, leaves and the, the harshness of that color. So I would darken it, I would desaturate it, I would blur it, I would, it can still be there. I mean, it still has nice shapes and things going on, but it's, it's that background comes and becomes the foreground of your photograph. And again, I wanna see rocks or something in the foreground or not any at all. It's this kind of, those rocks are sort of in this, um, half and half kind of place and I want to see uh, more um, decision compositionally. All right. So, uh, take it out and go to the next. Okay. Pattern and texture medley. You know what it is and you're seeing just such a little part of it. So it's, it's really the perfect extraction. There's no other color to jar us. And if you look at this, if you just really stare into this, it moves. There is some optical illusion, and no, I have not had any kind of mind altering substances. This, there is something about this. If you just sit and stare, the, scales on this side and then scales coming out of that one start to move like some kind of op art. Is it doing it for you guys? I'll, I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask y'all later, but um, there's some kind of optical illusion of motion that is happening when I, when I see this and that's just um, because you know what it is and it's moving it's, it's kind of creepy and it's cool. So um, I definitely let's put this one in there. All right. Pontiac. The light makes it. The, the backlighting, the repetition of shapes. There's no green scraggly shrubbery or anything harshly different than every element in here. It's, it's a perfection of arcs going back. Um, I love it, and um, definitely I want to then. All right, it's called Pontiac, right? I said that. I'm trying to get in a sec. Porch monster. So the photographer was very careful to get the sharpness on the face and eyes, which I think was correct and very very strong. Um, that's where the focus had to be on the face. Um, so much of the photograph, though drops off the depth of field drops off which is good but it's a it's a big part of the photograph just one little part of it is, is sharp so i would like to see and you can crop off you know you don't have to have the creature right in the middle edge to edge you know with nothing cropped off you can start looking in more compositional and maybe you just see um the sharper part you know um, I'm going to take this one out. All right. Portman star. Light, airy, um, really cool composition. Um, you know, it's the shape 
that we've seen before and it's very compelling you fall into it and then there's that little ship at the top that's um way far away i think that brings us in even more i think it's a strong image and there's um really i could not um give any other commentary it seems to be cropped to a uh, four by five proportion it could benefit more as a two to three because that shape actually is based on the two to three math um so i, I may be wrong if that that's four by five but um if you saw more of that coming down and weighted and it was a two to three that shape would benefit from being in a two to three format and i can explain later and i'm getting far afield again but um i will um, i'm going to take this one out all right furring so this one this one made me smile and that the quality of it is um the light the shape of the light i think it's um it's a nostalgic photograph it's um you know, a, a beloved pet for sure. I think it would have even more mood and mystery if it were uh, maybe monochrome, maybe look at it like that. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it in color, but um, it's such a, um, such an important shape. The interesting thing be, is, is not just the cat as a subject, it's sort of that, that shape of light coming in. And I think that would become more prominent if it was monochrome and I'm going to take it out. All right. 10 more to go. Uh, red and gold. The bottom part is luscious. The top part is too contrasty and confusing because of the white coming through. And it, seem, it, seems, it seems to um, fight with the restfulness. If you look at the top, it has more chaotic energy. If you look at the bottom, it becomes more restful. I will crop it as a square. And then when you do, guess what? That little red circle that you go through in the hole of the trunks in the, in the yellow tree, that becomes really cool. You see that more because that's, that's the, um, the shape, not all the busy white shapes up front. So crop off the top, keep all the bottom as a square. I think it would be cool. And I will skip this one. Oh, you not review it further? Okay, no. make sure I had it right. Okay, next. Riverwalk Chicago. Cool scene, a lot going on. I wanna see uh, either closer abstraction or more of the scene. This is, there's a lot of cool stuff, but there's this weird cusp where I either want to back up or either I want to zoom in and get more of that cool old light, get just the cooler tones up top. I think there's a opportunity here, real opportunity to simplify. If you got more of the light, cut out all the red, just got the top part and had those round shapes of the light and the round puffy clouds talking to it behind the other buildings and then it's all cool tone. Um, and then to me, that would become more simplified. And um, the, the quality, the tonality of it is really pretty. It has, a, um, you know, I think that's very nicely done. But um, when, when you're looking at scenes, look for repetition of shape, um, simplification of color and I'll take this one out. All right. Some sugar for mommy. This is a very sweet moment, very personal, very personal family picture. Um, I like the emotion of the moment. I like um, the simplified background, but I wanna see either more or less. I'd like it to be a little bit sharper on their faces. And again, the, the figures are right in the center, center of the frame. I think if they were, they were off center, it would be more interesting. And her foot is almost on the bottom edge of the, of the image frame. I want to see more weight at the bottom as well. Then if you had that nice weight, the feeling of the corners of the image, and then the shapes of the wood coming up behind them, that would really become empowered as a, um, 
as a compositional element that you could add beyond it just being, um, you know, a, a portrait. So um, I think it's great to, to photograph and work with people that you know, um, but, you know, boss them around and put them in some compositional situations and play with that. Um, I'll take this one out and All right. the next one. Stairway Sentinels, it's a composite. So to me, it's, it's, um, it's funny, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great idea. Compositing, I encourage you to do that. It's one of the most wonderful things you can do. Um, there is a way, and you know, you guys probably know this more than me, but there's a way in, um, in Photoshop where you can match light sources to the original image. So if the background has this real kind of yellowy light with um, the top cat, he kind of fits in that yellowy light, maybe because you know he's got that Siamese colored fur. And then the other cat with the tilted head, he kind of fits in there, but you start to get sort of more blue light. And then the other cat with the white fur on his face, he has this more blue light. So the light that special on that cat does not match the whole scene. So, um, and you, um, Mike, you may know what I'm talking about, but there's a thing where you say, um, match the tonality of one image and then it makes the light sources, the tonality of light sources for the other one. More of it. Um, Cause that one cat looks like he's in a different light source. And then that tips you off that it's a composite, you know, it's then if you wanted, what? That's color grading. Oh, yeah. Thank you. But then if you wanted to play it a different way and take all these different cats from other light sources and just put them all over the steps, you know, I think that would be really cool too. I mean, it's a composite, but you know that the cats were just all put on the steps and then it becomes, uh, you know, a really fun, you know, commentary on too many cats, I think would be nice. So I think it's something you can definitely continue to play with. And for today, I'm going to take it out. Of our final Thank decision. you. That's a topic to bring up later at some time. Okay. Next is Sunrise Botany Bay. Cool moment, cool shapes. I, I like the streak of light. Um, less at the top. I'm just dying to see a big, heavy foreground to hold all that up. When, when you have more weight at the bottom, the whole thing lifts up. And even though there's less sky, it makes it more about the sky, like you're looking up at it. This has a top heaviness that, um, that makes it, um, I think, less strong. So uh, I'm going to, I love colors and love the scene in the moment. I'm going to take it out. All right. Five more. Uh, Sunrise Gulf Shores, Alabama. Love the soft airiness, uh, love the glowiness, love the simplified soft color. Um, I don't know if it's a um, four by five or a square, but it, it's one of those shapes that I feel like you need to pick your formula. It should either be a perfect square or maybe it is four by five, but I think it would benefit from being more of a two to three ratio, the ratio of 35 millimeter film, which gives you a, a stronger panorama feeling. Um, it has a, it's, it looks like it was arbitrarily cropped to um, an unknown format size. So I would just look at it um, as far as your when you're shooting, say, okay, this is the, all of these are going to be square. All these are going to be, you know, two to three and, and compose within that. I, I like the composition. Um, I just think the format could be more um, determined. All right. Uh, let's take it out. Okay. Next is Thai Monk. This has a nostalgic quality I think because of colors, I like the softness of it. Um, I think it would be um, 
one of those where you see a little less or a little more. If you cropped it as a square, it becomes stronger and you lose the power plugs and the coffee urn on the other side that are very modern elements. And then it has this real nostalgia and it's much more simplified. Or if it's bigger and you, and you want to see more of the modern stuff and you're like, okay, well, this is a guy, he's doing this ancient stuff, but it's in the real world, you know, he's in the modern day, um, that you actually could see a little bit more on the sides. Again, it's sort of sort of an intermediate crop felt like you needed to decide I'm going in more or I'm going back out. And because he's looking at you, it becomes a portrait. If he was not looking at you or if he was, you know, more introspective and then we were just looking at him and he wasn't looking back at us, it would have a totally different mood. Um, I do like the colors and tonality, um, but today I'm going to take it out. All right. The Journey to Heaven's Light composite. Really cool. Yes, it's all centered. There's all this other stuff that, that's happening and it's the choice of color. Cool colors and warmer colors are in there even though they're all blues and greens. It's all about color choices and I think that as an artist, um, this person should very wisely it's, um, it's energetic. We're moving in and out. That one bright spot is our anchor. And then all these other shapes that are very um, organic, I, I find really, really pleasing. So I think it's a, um, a successful exploration. If the colors were not like this, it would not vibrate the same way. So there's a lot that this person did um, I think in picking that, that makes it successful. So I'm going to leave it in. All right. Three more. Union break. It's the, the seen and the unseen, you know, I mean, we, we know probably what the rest of them look like. So I think that's interesting. Um, but I want to know more. I want to know, you know, who they are, why they're there, maybe see more of the scene. Um, it is nebulous, and in some ways it's good. Um, compositionally, again, I think that green is the mood killer. That, you know, I like the window. So if you crop out that, you're gonna lose a cool window. Um, I would just completely desaturate that green so the leaves look like they were brown or something, you know? Because that, that green is the most prominent thing in the photograph, and I think it kills the, the mood and mystery of it. <clears throat> so I'm going to take it out. All right. I wonder if they're dead or alive anyway. <laughs> their names, their names I just wonder if the two people there are dead or alive, you know, they don't look good. Exactly. Okay, that, next is Woodland's, Woodland Color. Sorry. The harmony of the really, really bright fall colors work together. Again, I think that green is um, in the foreground is um, like a different element. So I want to desaturate the green or crop it out or just have a more simplified repetition of shapes. The one on the right is like a bay tree, I think. Um, or a rhododendron that's evergreen. It's a different kind of mood. It's evergreen, so it's not going to turn to fall colors, and it's a different shaped leaf, and it's a bigger leaf. So I keep looking at that and some other stuff, and I'm thinking, well, that's not as harmonious as the other, the other part. So I think the left-hand side cropped as a square becomes much stronger and that way we start seeing the shapes of the trees more and there's a unified foliage that's working for us um so i think there's some really great compositional stuff in here um, it just needs to be gotten into tighter and played around with and when you're out in nature shooting that's something that um that i'm going to talk about um that i think you'll you'll really like 
Um, for today, I'm going to take this one out. Okay, last but not least, take a big deep breath, everyone. Zion Splendor Composite. Great sky, and I want the sky to be dominant. The foreground, you know, it's there, but it looks like from a daytime picture. Um, I think that wonderful rocky scape is great, but I think it should be a little bit darker. Right now, it's like a nighttime sky with a daytime photograph. And I think the beauty and mystery is definitely the, the stars, you know. So I would darken and simplify the daytime part so that it looks more night. Um, and then the other thing I would do is watch out for that really hard, jagged line that's where the rocks, where the mountain meets the sky. We should not see anything there. That should just fade into, I don't mean it should be blurry, but it should not be sharpened at all because we don't want to see that. That, that line pops it right up in our face and it's way back in the distance. So if the foreground is darkened and that sharp line goes away, then we can just sail on into this beautiful astrophotography sky that you've created. That is the star of the shot. I'm sorry, Raheem. Yeah, this is yours image, right? Same. Right, yeah, it is. Yeah, so this is one I will mention. Well, so thank you. The uh, interesting thing about this shot, it's taken in Agra, uh, and I was actually took this shot through the window of a bus as we were driving past the scene on the street. And, uh, wow! <laughs> And uh, so it, it came out. It took a lot of them, and a lot of them were not in focus, but this one was. It has a real nostalgia to it. I mean, I never would have guessed that. Um, but, you know, in a way, it's the, the power of that image is that they were not observed. I mean, that you're, it's not like we're standing there messing up the energy of what was really going on, you know. Yeah. No, they, they had no idea that I was taking this. <laughs> And I think you feel it. You feel that that um, authenticity, you know. So congratulations. Very uh, well done. Thanks very much, Rob. Steve, this okay. was an ACRA, A-C-C-R-A? I'm sorry? This was an ACRA, A-C-C-R-A? A-C-R-A, A-C-R-A, A-C-R-A. That's where the Taj Mahal is. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good shot, Steve. Next. Thank you. Okay, next honorable mention, migration, and that's by Daryl. Yeah, so I was, uh, I went on a trip to Florida last week, going down I-75, stopped at a rest stop, and lo and behold, this flock of migrating birds landed in the top of this tree with no leaves. <laughs> I took one look over there, it's quite a ways off, it's a 500 millimeter telephoto shot. And, you know, there was no, sky, it was blah, so I said, this thing is a natural, for a high contrast picture. And that's what they were doing. I don't know why they're all facing in basically the same direction. And then that one at the end is doing his own thing, you know? Yeah, there's always a few. <laughs> <laughs> was Albert Chitchcock in the picture too? <laughs> I thought about it. I think they're starlings, but the light was low and I've been able to get the color version shows a little bit of their color. There may be some robins who are hangers on there in there, but otherwise I think it's all starlings, all kind of speckled. Very good. And I think it was the right decision to make it black and white and to give it that graphic. Um, yeah, that was and, the plan. And right. the, the edge, you know, you have to have that, that film border edge to hold it in. Yeah. And of course, you know, because you're, um, because oh, of the contrast right. and that really shows off the, the simplicity, you know, and there's nothing else in there. There's nothing else to, to you know, to jar you to say, oh, this doesn't it in. it's very harmonic. So yeah. very well done. Yep. Okay, moving on. Next honorable mention, Omnius Cloudburst, and that's by Jim Harrison. Very well done. Jim? 
You're going to show it bigger, Rohit? What? Are you going to show it bigger, Rohit? Is it, are you able there. to see it bigger now? Yeah, that's good. Um, okay. Yeah, this was two summers ago on the Blue Ridge Parkway, and you really rarely get to see a storm like this. But the thing I loved about the scene was the angry ominous left-hand side in clouds, and then just the the very soft grays on the right. And I tried to give it a sense of balance between those two. You did, highly successful. I just um, I enjoyed this image so much. And the more you look at it, the more the more little things you see. And the fact that you kept it soft, and that's what lets you go into it so deeply. You know, to really feast on the um, little subtleties. You know, it's beautifully done. Thank you. Okay. Third place, On a Wing by Michael Moss. Evening. Did we have Michael on the call? Yeah, this was um, taken at the Rome Air Show. And um, I don't know, for some reason, it reminded me of geese when they come in formation. And I watched a lot of videos and talked to a lot of people because. I think the object is you're supposed to get the propellers blurred and the plane in focus. And uh, then of course you've got the smoke trails that added to it, but it's, it's almost like they're coming right at you from the side. And to me, it, it feels like it's, they're gonna come past you and then go over your head. If you look at the photograph long enough. Michael, you... I think it's your best airplane picture yet. Pardon me? I think it's your Best airplane picture yet. Oh, thank you. Terrific. Thank you. Looks like Pearl Harbor to me. I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I, I wanted to honor it because it's not your typical photograph that you see it. There's, you've taken, you've made um, compositional and artistic decisions. I think the main one is um, it, it was stronger being monochrome um, mm -hmm. than, than full color. And it, it really lets you appreciate, I think, the, you know, what, what they're doing. And I do have a question for you. Uh -huh. did, um, did you compose the camera with them off to the edge like that? I mean, I love it how it's just not this centered, you know. I took a burst of like six photos when it came through. And this was the one that, I mean, I didn't crop it or anything. But this that was, was my question. You did not crop it. No. And you feel it. You feel that you compose this in the moment. And, and that's why it's a, and another thing that makes it so strong. Thank you. Very well done. Okay, second place. Sunset at Stage Light by Steve Director. Well, thank you. Uh, this. This is an interesting uh, lighthouse, which is missing its top. So it's not actually a lighthouse, functioning lighthouse anymore. Uh, it takes, it, it's about a mile walk on soft sand from a parking lot. Uh, it's out on Cape Cod. So it's quite a trek to, to get to this place. Uh, and it, it, was, it was nice in color, but I just couldn't get it to work right in color, so I tried it in black and white, and that's when it dawned on me that, and Robin, you noticed it right away, that all of the grasses were kind of pointing uh, the lighthouse. I, I hadn't noticed that at, when it was in color, it was washed out that way. And uh, so I worked on it for a while, so I, I like the shot, so I'm glad you do too. <laughs> Very much, very much, very strong. And everything in the shot is important to the success of the shot. I mean, it's a, um, any kind of scene to, to you know, really get a, a, a unique kind of landscape shot. Everything has to work together and it's um, very harmonious. There's no other, there was some other kind of different bush or tree or something in there it would it would mess up the simplicity but everything works and then of course you know the fact that it's um 
a lighthouse saying it's no longer, you know, a working lighthouse. It's still the light. It's the lightest thing in there. It's shining. It's the mm -hmm. whole house itself is the, is the bright beacon in the, in the gray. So there's okay. a poetic element to that as well. Okay, first play, Sun Run by Michelle Simmons. Thank you very much. Um, this is an amateur dancer I met named Erica Joshua Grigley. And um, it so looked like he's running. This was taken on the beltway, but that was actually a jump. And of course, I had to have him jump over and over and over again to get the shot. And he said, I can't jump anymore. And right about that time, the sun came through that crack. And he said, Eric, one more time. <laughs> so thank you. That, that really, I'm glad you shared that story. And that um, speaks so much to, um, to my own heart when I'm um, working with people, whether they're models or people that I see like that. And I, I want to create an image with them. I have no mercy. It's like, just one more time, do it again, do it again. And then when you see all those other elements coming together, and you're just like, oh, please, this is it. You know, the, and that's when it happens. And often for me, it's the very, it'll be the, the first shot that I didn't really, um, I didn't overthink it. Or it's the one where I got, had everything perfect and it's always the very last shot. <laughs> that's the one. And then you knew you got it and that's why you, you know, you stopped. <laughs> You stopped tormenting it, but it was totally worth it. I mean, this is just um, really unique. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. That was, that was, well, a, great, cool. that was a great shot, Michelle. And I knew it was yours immediately because you, yours is just so creative. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. So um, these I got, um, I have seven, I got to choose seven honorable mentions. Yes, seven honorable mentions and first, second, and third. Okay. So the first honorable mention is memories. Okay. And it's the um, uh, hold on. second row, second one. Yeah, give me one thing. Let me see who shot this. Uh, That's going to be Ken Anderson. Ken Anderson. Yes, that was, that was mine. Uh, Good job. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was uh, just very briefly, it was a monument in uh, Havana, actually. It was a uh, a pretty large monument and this was a very small part of it uh, and I was just attracted to that little pink flower thing there about all I did was sort of de desaturate some of the green on it otherwise it's pretty close to the way it was taken if you had not desaturated that green you would have not had this photograph so yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you me. thank you for doing that I mean, and there's something about um digital green that can be so overpowering and I know you heard me speak about it several times tonight I think that was a very important creative decision um, I like how it's um, longer you chose to make it a panorama which are, are two squares together which is very nice but then the way that it's um, divided the simplicity and the division of, um, of what's seen and not seen it's just it's very unique I think the I think the plant reflects the somber situation as well. So, yeah, somber environment. So the plant kind of reflects the somber mode mood, mood rather. Very emotional. Yeah. Thank so you. Congratulations. Okay. The Next one we mention. Colors of life. Okay, and that's by me. Congratulations. And I also um, 
Well, t tell us about it. Tell us about it. I actually shot this uh, in Morocco, uh, in one of their busiest markets, uh, a city called Chef Chouan. I'm sure you might have heard it. It's called. Uh, it's also called as Blue City. Uh, they use. I mean, over there they use these colors to paint on the wall. And so if, if you go to the city, I mean, most of the walls are painted blue, but you do see some other colors as well. So uh, this was one of the street shops uh, I was passing through and they have this, all these colors laid in front of the shop. And I thought that could be a good picture uh, just to get it. And then while I did, as you can see, I did some post-processing because my focus was to bring all the colors um, dominant in the picture. So that's why I chose the sepia back kind of tone for the rest of the picture and bring out the colors. And the, the blue, the blue bag is the biggest one. So like you were saying, most of the walls are blue. So that's the biggest bag. That's funny. Um, yeah. It's really impressive that it's so neat. I mean, I assume you didn't have to go and straighten all the bags out. I mean, everything is perfect in that shop, it looks like. Yeah. From the way that the scoops are even sitting in there. Yeah. And the bags are perfectly rolled and, you know, there's no debris around the edges. I mean, it's, it, it's perfectly. That's how they get customers. Yeah. Well, you illustrated it so well and, and in full color, it would not be as interesting because um, you've created your own um, sort of nostalgic pastel kind of hand colored palette with this that, um, that, adds a real romanticism to it, you know, and that was your creative decision. And I really applaud you for, for doing that. And I don't know how much trouble it would be, but I would really encourage you to go back and to all the other little um, products that, that mm -hmm. would have had color. Um, like if you, you have the, first two shelves colorized. And then that next one, um, I don't know if those are little figurines or what, but I would colorize the rest of the shelves, maybe a couple of things on the other side, just so it doesn't look truncated right there. And then maybe even the little brooms or something, there could just be some faint more color to that. Not the, not the 992 and the, the wall, none of that. Mm -hmm with just the objects because um, it just, it just kind of drops off. And maybe, maybe those ones up to the edge aren't, maybe the colors aren't as primary or as vibrant, but it's just a little bit there. So there's not that where it immediately stops and starts kind of thing to it. And, and the reason I say that is because um, I love this image. I, I, I think it's um, very unique and, um, beautiful and nostalgic and I think it would really be worth doing that last little part. I'll definitely give it a shot. Okay, next honorable mention. Is um, the journey of heaven's light. And that's by Mike Schaefer. Surprise everyone. Never expected that I bet. But I, this was a vision of what it's like to leave Earth and go to heaven in kind of an imaginary way. That's why I picked the colors of the Earth. And that's why I made the very astute on your part, uh, Robin, to note that the center part had an organic plant-like thing. So you're leaving Earth and you're going to the heaven. Um, the, the star is actually a real star. It comes from the uh, solar eclipse that I took in, um, in uh, Wyoming. So that's the way it looked right before the eclipse hit, which I calculated was literally hundredth of a second timing. Anyway, this is the jar I used, if you can even see it, and let's see if I can get this, because I brought it, I think it might have a shot at, well, maybe not, there it is. This is the jar I used. So you turn it upside down, put a light in it, light like that, mm -hmm. and put a bright light in it underneath it on a light box, that's what you get, because it's got the blue parts to it, see that? But anyway, so what I did is I shot that, and then I took the brush and I, I smoothed it out to make it swirl, and I just kind of created it from, from that vase or the little vase I just showed you. And that's it. That was the vision is what's like to go to heaven. You're leaving earth and you're going to heaven. So there you go. And, you know, as part illustration, and I think it's really interesting to hear the stories about how these started as an actual photograph 
but when you look at it, there is some, um, there's spatially some photorealistic reality that, that I think we feel, even though we don't know exactly what it was. So it's always interesting to hear what elements you use to create it. But um, like I said, when I was reviewing this image, if you had not picked those colors, it had just been, you know, some arbitrary, you know, oh, I'm just going to do some wild trippy colors, you know, it, it wouldn't have the power. So it's the, the choices that you made with that, that move you in and out um, spatially. And I think you showed a real artistic sensitivity when you did that. So. Oh, thank you. Again, I was thinking about the most common colors we see on Earth is blue from the ocean and green from the trees, and that was the basis for that. Yeah, thank you. Um, Mike, a pharmacological yeah. comment. Um, that um, near-death experience phenomenon that you're referring to is also reproduced by hallucinogenic drugs. Well, I didn't use that, but it, it apparently I didn't need it. <laughs> it's a, uh, you know, there's a, there's a reality to the trippiness. Yeah. Thank you. Very cool. Okay. Next honorable mention. Next honorable mention is Pontiac. Okay. And that's by Jim Harrison. Jim, good job. Thank you, Mike. Uh, this was at Simpson's Farm, uh, which we were introduced to by Al McLeod and uh, some nice late afternoon light and uh, just took, you know, quite a few shots here trying to get the a composition that really showed with the uh, uh, The visage of Pontiac and also really got the, the shapes of, of the hood. So uh, Hope everybody enjoys that one. You totally nailed it. And the, the backlighting, the time of day, the quality of light, um, the fact that you went the extra mile to get everything balanced compositionally. You know, it's not just, oh, here's a photograph of a really cool thing, well lit. Um, I like the texture in the foreground on, underneath the face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the fact that it's off to the side and then it's moving forward and then all this other beautiful repetition of shape. So um, yeah, totally, totally excellent. One thing I questioned, if you'd show it again, please, Rohit. Um, obviously the very colorful, colorful head dominates the image, but you also have the, the same bright color in the, in the lower right corner. Um, but in the end, I thought it worked because you end up with a, a triangle between the uh, specular reflection on the hood, the, the head, and then the, the same color in the lower right corner. So uh, I don't know if anybody else has thoughts about that, but that's what I ended up with. It's um, a very pleasing color too, Jim. And like you were saying, there's, there's not, um, you know, that strong, but there's no other distracting color, you know, it lets that be the star of the shot. So, I love so, it. So, Jim, is this, was this like this bright orange originally or is it because of the effect of the sun? Yeah, the sun is, is shining through the object. So, um, okay. yeah, that, that's its color, yeah. Uh, where's the Terminator while you're at it? Because it reminds me of the Terminator number two. <laughs> Anyway. Okay, next honorable mention. Next is Fairy Mushroom. And that's by Genario. This is uh, one of the collection of mushrooms I've done doing the shutdown over the over the probably the last four months out of Sweetwater. Uh, tons of them out there. They're pretty much gone now, but uh, the variety out there to look for them is, is quite amazing. So I shot this with a 60 millimeter macro. And uh, cool. it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, it, it, it's a lot of fun going finding these things. But you gotta get dirty. 
because you've got to lay down on the ground to get most of these shots. And it's worth it for the dramatic angle. Totally, it's totally worth it for that drama. Um, and I, I don't know, the mushrooms come back in the spring as well, so. Yeah, it, it depends on the rain. If it's really dry, they don't. If you get some rain and, and it moisture and everything, it, they, they'll pop at any time. But uh, uh, I was out there two weeks ago, a week ago, to, the day after uh, New Year's, and uh, Karen and I, we found a whole cluster of walking, walking around. So. Well, you made it look really monumental from the angle and, and how close you got. So I think that. Um, yeah, I like these. Uh, like these with a flash, with a little two dollar flashlight. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. an area with that light. It really pops back. Yeah, um, it's just a little cheap flashlight that someone gave me. It was a promotional flashlight. And what a lot of times I do is I'll, if it's, this one was fairly easy to lock, but sometimes they're so close to the ground, I dig a hole in the ground and put the flashlight in the hole so I could point it up at the bottom of the mushroom. Like an architectural light. It, if you find Mike what, what, asking you just where you took this photo, you might consider that he wants to know because he wants to use the mushrooms to produce some more of those uh, <laughs> body pictures. I don't know anything about mushroom more than I. I well, muscarinic know. acid comes from a mushroom. Muscarinic acid is the is the is the original molecule that leads to LSD. So, good point, Daryl. Yeah, I have no idea. Eat them or not? I'll tell you all about it later, Genario. <laughs> <laughs> so the next honorable mention. A fragile balance. Okay, and that's by which, uh, it's me. Mike, yeah, Mike Shiver. Yeah, surprise, surprise. Uh, you know, when I first, I shot this just the other day and I we wanted to put an American kind of flag. Have you ever seen Don McLean's cover for American Pie? If you're really old, you'll know what the thumb looks like. And I was gonna clone that. I was gonna paint, I was painting it on the egg and the egg broke. And I said a four letter word, so this is what I ended up with because I broke the egg after I almost got it done. So I wanted an American flag kind of on it, like in Don McLean's American Pie cover. But anyway, um, I didn't quite get this done the way I wanted it in the end, but I'm so, but anyway, I liked it. I'm gonna probably reshoot it. Um, I, I, I see your point about the, the white part of the egg. I kind of, it's iffy for me whether or not, I kind of like the contrast between the detail in the bottom of the egg and the brightness, almost like, like, like life's gonna appear out of the egg, but I could see pulling that light back. But that histogram did not touch the right side of the curve. So the details are still there. So maybe I'll pull that back and, and take your advice and see what I get from it. But I, yeah. I kind of like the idea of having that, that contrast between birth and yeah. that kind of thing. But again, I see your, I'll, I might try to pull the whites down a little bit and see what I get. Is this a composite? No, this is as is. This shooting black acrylic reflection. I, I have a black piece of black acrylic which one of our challenges will involve black acrylic coming up and two forks, which I taped down with tape and I just literally put the egg on the thing and shot it in a light box. This is not a composite. It's a, it's yeah, a the, bottom, the bottom, the uh, reflective tines look like they're not holding the egg. <laughs> oh, they're holding the egg all right. Oh man. Yeah, because I had the, yeah. the American, that American flag on there and it fell on the black acrylic. So I had to clean it off. Mm-hmm. But I had the same thought as Rue, but then I saw the reflection and all it does look sort of maybe like it's chippy toes on the mm -hmm. lines of the fork. I concluded it was on the fork. Yeah, well, get, get two forks, tape them down and put it, if you have an oven that has a black top like this, yeah. see how it works. You just have to, you just, all you have to do is tape the forks and the egg will balance on those two forks. Huh. Anyway, hey, yeah. You know, I Mike, think that would look really cool turned upside down too. Yeah, a matter of fact, yeah, that's a good point. And I thought about that too, but um, you know, yeah, there's so many things you can do with this, but you're gonna see a lot of this kind of still lives from me this year. I'm not gonna enter that much this year, but this is what you're gonna see a lot of. So, cause I'm getting into it, so. Well, anyway, for us. Thanks, you, thanks a bunch. You may wanna experiment a little bit on, on just for, for fun, uh, trying different images on that egg. 
you know, composite different images on that egg, just see what happens. Oh yeah, there's also there's a bunch of things you can do. I kind of like the idea that it's what it looked like, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm all about playing with it and see what you get. It's all fun. Well, it's a design. You know, you set it up, and the reflection adds to the design. The the, the lighting, you know, everything that that you've done is really um, added added to the the tension of it as well. You know, I mean, if I tried to do that, I I think it would, I wouldn't have the I don't know, the patience to, to get it to balance. And I know I would definitely break a bunch of eggs. Well, it wasn't fun breaking the one, especially since I got the flag painted on there and it broke on me. So. <laughs> okay, last honorable mention. The last of the honorable mentions is fish out of water. Okay, and that's by Michelle. Refraction. Thank you. Um, since we're doing refractions, I'll share a couple things I learned with you guys. Um, first, I did this whole thing without ever touching that fish, because I hate fish. But, um, this may be common knowledge to all DSLR users, but I learned so much about the different lenses on the iPhone. What I, the way I ended up taking the shot um, was I had to move far away and use my zoom lens or the bottom of the glasses were all crooked and uh, I, I can tell you when you try this refraction thing everything matters the uh, width of the glass the distance from the fish to the glass the distance from the glass to the to the front of the camera um, it all really matters. Uh, the first fish was frozen. That's how long it took. This took like all day. To get the head backwards and the tail backwards literally took me all day. <laughs> um, but thank you very much. Anyway, I hope that helps you when you do your refractions. That's why it's called a challenge. It's, not, it's harder than you think. It was hard. Well, it was definitely worth your, your effort and time. I, I find it very compelling and the, the simplicity of it. I know it wasn't simple what you went through to, to get it all like that, but um, yeah, it's um, very, very compelling. So my compliments. Thank you. Poor fish. No, he got me. <laughs> she hates fish Her. though, it's a dead fish. My daughter, I gave it to my daughter. <laughs> Did you buy it? Okay, third the picture. Yes. <laughs> Third place is Into the Night. Into the Night, like a song. I couldn't. And this is by uh, Vivian Lynch. Yes, thank you. I couldn't keep from going back to this because <laughs> of the composition. It is just absolutely wonderful and it's it's a design it's a composition and you know you have to tell us more about it uh, <laughs> um it is um it was the first time i had done this so i was playing with a new app on my phone which i normally do not shoot with my phone um so i was playing with the app and um i was i'm learning ICM and I'm learning multiple exposure and I'm doing all that with my camera. So I had this app and I decided to, I was in the bathroom and we have a light switch that is chrome and it's square and in the middle part which you press to turn it on it's round. So I had a pink t-shirt on and I had um, a pair of jeans on so I was reflecting in that light switch. So I took eight images with my phone and um, I took it in the light and I, you know, it didn't all that great. I mean, I knew that I could probably do something with it. So I took it in the Lightroom, did a little bit of adjustment and then I took it into Topaz and um, turned it into the art picture. It's so it reminds me of a Turner work. Yeah, it yeah, looks like it, a That's exactly, you beat me to it, Rue. Yeah, <laughs> me too. I just really love looking at it. So it's really a reflection of you in a light switch. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm, with my pink t-shirt on and my jeans and it was one of those days that you don't go outside I was in and I was playing with just this app that I had never done anything with and I'm learning to be more creative in topaz that's one of the things I love like abstract art that's painting um, so that's what I'm teaching myself how to do in topaz so um, that's what I ended up coming up with uh, yeah. Vivian, it's a pleasure having you join us. It's really oh, thank you, thank you very much. So nice to be here. What's the app? Uh, the app is um, let me look at it real quick. It's called Lysergic Acid. Yeah, <laughs> it's called <laughs> Average Cam. It's A V G C A M on the iPhone. I'm not sure what it's called on um, uh, if. if on Android, I'm not real sure. Um, it is a fun app to play with um, on multiple exposures. Well, the real secret of success of that was, you know, obviously the simplicity, but there was a compositional thing going on there. So, um, you know, definitely keep your compositional eye engaged. That's, that's um, what made that just really over the top. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. It really makes my day. Aww. Second place. Second place. Oh, the second place. Um, pattern and texture. Uh, that's mine. Um, some of you have seen it before. That's not a snake, by the way. Uh, I made it. That come, I got the, it's fabric that you can get that looks like reptile. You know, they, you can buy that stuff. And the eye is a ping pong ball. So, that's, do y'all see, see it moving? Yeah, the eye's not, this is not a real snake. It's the eye's a ping pong ball. You paint it and, and you know, you just, you, that's what that is. And then the snake is actually fabric. So this is not a real snake, but, but anyway, you're right. The ang the, you have two triangles kind of, and you're right. The whole point is to make it look like it's moving a little bit, but, but uh, okay. that, that's my, my, the real, I used a, uh, 90 millimeter macro Tamron lens. I used F32 to get that depth of field. F32. So. Is but, the fabric textured, or is it flat? No, it's textured. It, you, it it's textured. Yeah, very textured. And so you just you just put it together and get a you get a ping pong ball. You paint it and and then you <laughs> and then you you have to you, then you put a crack. You cut a crack in it carefully without the whole thing cracking and. What I did is I put tape over the edges so it wouldn't crack, and I stuffed it with black stuff, like black velvet, and that's the effect you get. So it, anyway, that oh, was the idea. Yeah. So it's really an illusion shot, but the idea is, is to make it look real, but also make it look like it's alive. Like a very good observation there, Robin. Live How did you, you went into this with the intention to make it an optical illusion that it looked like it was going to move. You're right. And I that the thing is, that wasn't my idea. That is... That is an idea that sometimes if you look at, you get online and you look at some photographs that you can almost sense they're moving. And so yeah. that's, it's, so I kind of stole that from somebody else, you know, a little bit. No, but I mean, you totally did. I mean, I don't know how in the world you did that, but if you guys, I mean, like if, if you just look at it, that side of the, right. the vertical scales, it starts moving in and it looks right. like the head and eye part is moving over it. Like a wave, right? Like kind of a wave effect, like it's moving. Yeah, that's that was the idea, but it but, scared me when I started looking at it. I was just like, yeah. what is it? Why, how can it move? It's not animated. Well, not, ever, not everyone sees that. It's just like when you look at the old lady, the famous old lady and young lady photograph. Some people see the old lady and some people see the young lady. So it's it's optical illusion as well. So, you know, Mike, yeah. I think I think when uh, you get asked what how what you know the effects of the pandemic on you, I think you found a whole new genre. <laughs> You're right. Right. Well, anyway, anyway, it's it's uh, we do have a a, a competition where we're going to do primary colors and secondary colors. Strip description is going to come out, but one of the choices is green, so certainly this would fit for that. But but anyway, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Okay. Awesome. You totally freaked me out, so that's good. Good. Um, and then our first place color winner is always watching. That is. And that's by Jen. Yes, Jen's not here. I don't think is she here. I 
communicate with Jen what was happening. She had gone out of town and just got back and is too exhausted to to participate. She's got a photo shoot at Fur Kids tomorrow. That's a place that uh, yeah, yeah. I think helps um, injured animals or something like that. Yeah. I'll tell her. I think this is taken near her backyard or something. It's real close. Her, in her, backyard. her next backyard through the window. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's what I recall. Anyway. So this was a real authentic scene that she saw through the window. Well, I'll tell yep. you what she just told me in a message. If it wins anything, you can just say it was shot in April last year at my neighbor's yard, 7,200 lens. She's been watching this Fox family. She watched them last spring. Wow. Wow. I mean, I was wondering if it was, um, you know, in any way constructed because it doesn't, you know, I mean, it's, it's very um, accurate to the, to the light source, you know, and all that. And it's sharp, but it has a soft nostalgia to it as well. So, uh, so yeah, call and tell her the good news. Yeah, I just sent her a text message. My comment to her when I first saw this a while back was, when is that mama going to tell those kids to get out of the house? <laughs> I mean, don't they look huge? And there was something like five of them. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it's a, great, it's a great shot to put in, a, in your newborn's a room or with their children and stuff like that. It's very touching. Well, Jen, Jen has a real, a real ability to take a very realistic shot and make it look like a painting. You know, um, I don't know how she does that, but you know, she but she always does that very well. Anyway, that's that's all, folks. Uh, thanks for hanging in there, the troopers. Uh, it's late, but it was well worth it. I told uh, Robin that it's gone a while, but when you have quality, length doesn't matter. So thanks a bunch for your time. It was awesome. This is being recorded, by the way. I, d I will delete all things that could get you imprisoned. <laughs> and um, and it will be up on YouTube, and I'll send out the link to everybody. So I, I encourage you all to really review the whole thing because we all learned a lot tonight. We really did. So thank you. Thanks very much, Robin. Well done. Thank you, Robin. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Hey, Mike. Thanks, Great Thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Mike. Mark, I'm going to call you about your book too. I'm going to hear more about that. So um, oh, we'll sure. Talk about that later. Call call me anytime. I will. See you. Bye bye. Hey. Bye. Uh, Mike, I was just wondering, have you gotten yeah. any of my emails? What's that? Have you gotten any of my emails? We've had the, the dialogue back and forth about the. Are you, are you sending it to the? Are you sending it to the one five four six seven email or the five four six? I've sent it to every email address I know. Of. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I admit I've been I've been a little bit negligent at times on my emails, but I will check them all. Yeah. Okay, I was just responding to your email about the ribbon, so. Oh, I got that. No, I have that written down. I just have to send them out. Oh, you, I was, you asked me if I could find your place, so. I would have oh, to... yeah, that, I remember that. I, I will, I'll take care I, of that. It's on just, my list. I just wanted to be sure I had an address that worked. Let me oh, know. Oh, yeah, you do. Send, send I, me I, an email whenever you can. I did more see it. More important for you to get some rest. Thank okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Right, Thanks so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for a hit. Bye-bye. Okay. Be great.